kind of an old school guy. I, I have typically blended uh, in my work. I, do, I have done and uh, do a lot of work in neo-Gothic churches. Uh, everything from carving to, you know, uh, scaffolding erection, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a broad swath, but based pretty severely in traditional woodworking. Um, probably one of the reasons I got involved with Shaper, the company, was, uh, does anybody know who Jimmy Duresta is? He's a friend of mine that some of you might know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I went to uh, Maker Fair uh, Bay Area about three years ago, and um, I work in a small shop by myself. I uh, used to have employees and stuff, but kind of scaled back, and... Uh, Jimmy said, hey, have you seen this new technology? We, he drug me physically across the grounds and, to see this, and immediately the advantages uh, of a highly mobile, highly scalable uh, CNC machine just went off in my head. Um, I have built furniture that is 29 feet tall, 19 feet wide. Uh, you can see there's some pictures up here, but so this this idea of not being uh, constricted to a bed like we have here uh, was I was all about it. So that's kind of started a, a series of events that um, eventually led to this last October. The while this was in pre-release, um, Shaper sent me this to consult with them on the user interface. So in other words, we have a bunch of really smart guys, electrical engineer, uh, MIT types, and they needed to make sure that it was clear enough to idiots. So they said, what we should do is get an idiot and, and watch him play with it, kind of like gorillas at the zoo with a mirror, you know? <laughs> so, um, so basically I made, uh, I think, somewhere around 40 hours of uh, videotape of me just trying to figure out, because there's no manual, you know, it's all on board. So just working through it and uh, all the engineers made fun of me at lunch for months on end, I think. So, so that's kind of how the, the bit of the background. And, um, and so I, I'm just amped to be involved with it, quite frankly. The really cool people that are, I feel, are just doing Obviously, it's a profit motivation. They're a company, but they really want to make a highly useful, highly um, long-term nice piece of equipment. So, so that's that. Um, the advantages of this guy uh, are, number one, it's portability. Um, you know, putting this in the back of a 2001 Nissan pickup truck is pretty difficult <laughs> as opposed to, to take it. Yeah, it, it could be done <laughs> as opposed to the entire CNC machine being in a sustainer box this big. That's a huge one. The other one, like I said, is scalability. The shaper uh, knows where it is in the world by shaper tape. So it reads these dominoes and um, basically that's how it forms its own bed. What's that? Did I say it again? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Shaper is the tool company. Origin is this tool. And it, you get a dime for every time you catch me saying that because they're busting my chops about that. This becomes the virtual workspace that that bed is. Um, so the first thing that happens with this guy is we, we lay this tape out on our piece and then do a scan that stitches all of these guys together virtually and creates what, what is called a workspace. And that's our bed. Then we can take a design and place it anywhere we want to on that workspace. And that workspace can be a, an installed piece in a, you know, say on a staircase or something and you want to put a detail on a null post. Very easily could be put right there. It could be this slab. It, could, it can be anything that can be cut, uh, which 
kind of blows my mind if you think about it. So, um, so that those are the two things. Um, I've spent a lot of my time in my career uh, doing circular work. And if any of you guys, how much time do you spend fairing a curve after you cut it to make it feel and look perfect? The big thing for this guy, the first idea that I had that just blew my mind was the ability to make a perfect arc and cut out all that time of fairing. Not so much the cutting of it, but the actual fairing and making it feel and look right. Especially with pieces that are, you know, there's tactile involvement in them. Because, I, I don't know, it drives me crazy. I, I'm that guy that, you know, walks into Sears Tower or something and if I see a curve, I'm, I'm feeling it, you know, along to see if it's, it's true. So I get a little OCD about that. <laughs> uh, um, Wi-Fi enabled. So the big thing for me is if, if I get in over my head from a design software point of view, which is about, I drowned in about that deep of water, I can remotely uh, work with a designer in Fusion 360 collaboratively and bring it right, in, right into this machine without touching my computer. He can put that into Fusion, a shared Fusion uh, desk or whatever they call that and bring it right into here and I'm going. The one thing to, that I, being an older school guy, you know, you buy a tool and that's what you get. Um, the thing that I'm getting used to is this is a platform and software updates from this company are going to be ever increasing and this capacity that it has now in I don't know when the next one's coming, but say three months, it, it'll change everything here. Uh, the latest one was called the Berryessa update, which um, gave us the ability to scale a drawing on the tool, which um, cutting boards, everybody's favorite. Um, <laughs> this is the same file. It's just now I have the ability to make this the size of a, of a postage stamp, or I can make it the size of a football field with no degradation of quality in the cut, which to me is just absolutely mind-blowing. Just a lot more walking. Just a lot more walking and a lot more shaper tape. <laughs>
if it knows the size of the board and the the 90 degree, mm -hmm. then yeah, then you can take it to the center. It'll snap to the grid. Gotcha. So on this one, uh, we will just kind of eyeball it. If we want it, <laughs> if we wanted the stripes to be, you know, not up and down, then your magic. Uh, okay, so now it, it has placed that design where Alma decided it was right. Okay, so now uh, we're out of design mode, and now we're going to go to cut mode. And now, um, now we have marching ants. So this is this is a cut path um, that Shaper's saying, I know exactly what you want me to do, kind of. So we need to tell it multiple things. Number one, we need to tell it how deep we want it, which is typically the diameter of the bit. So we have an eighth inch bit in there. We're gonna go eighth inch deep for our first cut. Um, it'll, it wants to know if we wanna be on the line, centered on the line, inside the line, outside the line. Uh, we also have a pocketing feature. The pocket feature would move inside of the, the line by, I think it's a hundredth of an inch. Then you can go in and select an inside cut, which brings it out to the line. So basically you do all your hogging first, and then you come out and clean it up nice and tidy. Nice. Okay. Does so, it give you any warning if your bit's bigger than your detail? You know, yes. Say yeah, it kind of goes, yeah, are you sure you want to do that? Because <laughs> it's not going to look very good type of deal. Um, ruin that piece of wood. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this one outside of the line as if we were punching out a plaque or a cutting board, okay? And um, basically, to uh, every time you change a bit, you want to do what's called a Z-touch, which allows the machine to find out where this plane is, okay? So now it knows in relation to where you loaded that bit, exactly where the end of the bit is, which determines your depth, all that stuff. So we didn't change the bit, but that's just good information. That workspace, we can do anything we want with this, with the machine, you know, change it, do whatever we want, take it back here, and we're still, we're still there. So that's, that's kind of the cool, you know, if you had an, an old, buggered up quarter inch bit that you wanted to. I would probably stay in the same bit diameter just to be safe, but it would be something to play with. <laughs> so it's got a memory, so in case we forget what we're doing, it takes care of that. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And you can save this workspace so that if you want to shut the machine down completely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hang out overnight, come back, that workspace will still be available to you. Okay, we're going to go. Also, when I turn this on, for those who are looking over the shoulder, uh, for inside and outside routing, we all know that we've got to go different directions, depending on what we're doing. The machine also knows that and gives you an arrow of which way, depending on if you're inside or outside rotating. So it, I, that was one of the ones that I went, because I fought it a couple times. Because I, in order for the cutter to be engaged, I have to be inside this round zone of stupid, I call it, because <laughs> if you can't figure that out, you shouldn't be using it. But, um, but so, so I'm trying to move it, and it's, it's like... It's a great marketing tactic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, somebody at Shaper, or Shaper right now is going, oh, God. Um, if it moves out of that, it automatically retracts. 